Yes. Can you just talk a little bit about it? Just so we, you know, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Look, I, I heard Anthony yesterday about all those PowerPoint slides, so we're not doing anything, anything like that. that. Yeah, just There's the fire. Like that's, that's all we got today. <laughs> so when I start, when I started Stromalia Consulting, I left Conica Minolta, and uh, my plan actually was to go to Italy for a little bit with my wife, hang out, and kind of enjoy some kind of semi-retirement. Figure out what I was going to do, and uh, obviously because of COVID, it wasn't really possible to get over there. So um, my wife said, "You need to do some shit because you're really, <laughs> annoying, you're really annoying me, right?" Here. So uh, I started Stromalio Consulting, and I started getting some projects, and they were fun. You know, it kept me busy, and a lot of it actually was in the M and A work area, and uh, helping buy or sell some dealers, and that became interesting too because of COVID. But during the process of those projects, I came to the conclusion that a lot of dealers were really looking for some answers on how to grow the business profitably. And they needed solutions that were agnostic. And no offense to any OEM in the room, but you know, if you go to an OEM show, they're gonna tell you you buy the software that really is somehow tied to whatever it is that they're doing. And you were part of the OEM, <laughs> yes, yes, and, and they did it well, you know, they did it they really did well. well. That's true. So long story short, you know, at Barfield and, you know, Scott Murr and the guys, you know, start, I started working with them and figuring out, wow, they've got some pretty interesting things here. And I was working with them one-on-one, -on -one, and then I decided, you know, Raj, same thing. I mean, we're working one-on-one, -on -one. let's pull this group together. And then I realized that group in and of itself, and by the way, we have 31 members right now, which is, thank you very much, so good job. Well, then I decided that, you know, I'm not that smart, so we need to bring in some dealers who are really smart. And so we have two groups, one is in the consortium. One is really on the business agility side, all these innovation companies or training companies or software companies. And the other group is a group of dealers, 15 dealers. Marco, LDI, you know, and so on. So we communicate back and forth. We ask them questions, what's hurt, you know, what kind of pain do you have? How can we solve it? How can we help you solve it? The mission is real simple. How do we float all boats? How do we help this industry, you know, really figure out what's next? How do I do it? And, you know, somebody, I heard somebody, where's Melanie? Melanie, you in here? Someone, who is the lady sitting next to you? Karen. Claudia. 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 Yeah. Well, I shouldn't probably have named her, but I heard her. I heard her ask you a question, which goes right to what we're talking about. And her question to you was, how do I get a dealer to change? Right? Good question. Along those lines. After after the last speaker, right? He was what was his name? Paul. Paul. Call yeah. Carl. Paul. He's here. There you are. Yeah. So he did he did a great job. He summed it up. But the first question she asked you was, yeah, that's great, but how do I get a dealer to change? Right? How do I get them to embrace it? And short of tasing them, <laughs> which by the way is a highly recommended tool. Cow yeah. prod. And that that is what we do. How do we get a dealer yanked, coerced, bribed, encouraged, and inspired? to look at things that they don't necessarily look at on a daily basis. But of course, we're all brilliant, so we don't really need to work, right? <laughs> Hence, Keep Point you know, comes in and helps us, right? So that's what I'm doing. Very good. Yep, there you go. You know, it's interesting, you know, for the past 10 years, uh, we've been talking about a lot of different things to have dealers change. Diversification is one of them that we've been, again, talking about for a long time. The pandemic really has forced now dealers to really change, right? I mean, for anyone that you know attended our session yesterday, we talked a lot about the pandemic and the effects on it. Um, you know some of the numbers that we've been seeing. What, what are you seeing out there from the dealers on how it affected them? Yeah, I mean, again, you probably talked about that. Your numbers that I saw really were dramatic, right? But I think typically, you know, you've got a dealer who is, was coming out of the pandemic and pandemic, and now all of a sudden runs smack into the supply chain problems, right? Yeah. So you can't really, I mean, it was a trifecta of bad. I mean, it just, you can't, you can't I mean, really stuff out of here. You know, I mean, can you imagine, so I only know one guy who predicted the pandemic and he wrote an article about it four years ago. So, it's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Go with me, West. 
<laughs> so, so you know how? What are the dealers doing? Well, you know what? Their their resilience yeah. was really inspiring. And when I hear people talking badly about the dealer issues and what they've been dealing with, I find it objectionable. You know, the business has been in business for 95 years now as a BTA organization. Mm -hmm. And in my lifetime, I mean, I've gone, I've seen it all. I mean, from copy paper, you know, carbon paper to pencils to word processing <laughs> to where we are today. And the dealers are healthy. What they are is anxious, I think, for a number of reasons. Generationally, okay, hey, I'm 67 years old. What do I do with this business? You know, if I hang on to it for another 10 years, if I live to be 95, it's probably better if I keep it than sell it, which is not a really good plan, right? <laughs> so, but that's what they think. But their numbers are down. You know, when you look at them, the top line was probably down about 20, 25% from what I hear. The bottom line actually was, in most cases, better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is kind of fake news too. Because <laughs> It was better because they took the actions they should have been taking a long time ago, number one. So good and bad in that. And the last thing, of course, is they've somehow <coughs> captured the PPP money in a way that helped their business. So they were coming out of it. They were coming out of it, I think, pretty darn well. And Michael, you can kind of validate what I'm saying, but they were coming out of it and then right into supply chain. So I think we're gonna see really what happens in the next six months. But I'm very, very proud of the dealer community because you guys really pulled off a miracle. Here, here. <laughs>